So to continue our conversation, we know that we struggle here in Utah electing women into political office, but there's also some other areas of concern, and one of them is the wage gap. Senator Escamilla, tell us about your work with that. You know, we've uh, been addressing that at the Women in the Economy Commission that has um, outside members of the community addressing issues at the policy-wise, and three other great legislators, uh, Senator Henderson, Representative Edwards, and Representative Chavez Haug. And one of the things that we are addressing is in the state. I mean, so how is the state looking? And one thing that we learned is that it's a very difficult thing to, I guess, to compare. But right now, just comparing in terms of just wage and similarities on the on their background, there are gaps. So what I'm right now working on is some proposed legislation that will have a strategic plan of five years for every state agency to address those issues. So we wanna we wanna make sure that there's something happening that is being addressed at the human resource management level and that something is taking place at the state level. If we are not setting the example, it's hard for anybody else to follow. But my understanding is that it's a very complicated issue because it's hard to, you know, how do you measure experience versus, you know, just only education and some people are outside of the workforce for a while. This is an issue with women uh, that may, you know, decide to stay home for a couple of years or four years or five. And well, how do you measure that? So I, it, it's been interesting to have that conversation, but we need to do more in the state of Utah and even within the state government. And Jennifer, what has your reporting told you about this? I think what we know is that Utah is considered one of the, you know, I don't like to use the word worst, but one of the worst places for women that we are still lagging at about 70 percent. Um, on the dollar for men. And uh, I think sh uh, Senator Escamilla is right that the, the issues are really complicated. It's not as simple as saying, you know, education versus experience that women do. If you get out of the workforce for a while, how do you then get penalized? Um, and I have worked in newsrooms where I made 10, 12, $15,000 less than men and was told, well, you know, the man has a family to support. And I'm like, well, oh. Gee, <laughs> me too. So, I mean, I'm the only earner in my family right now. So, I want to make sure I want to work in an environment where, and I am presently working in an environment where I'm paid equally. But I think it's a real struggle for a lot of women. We know we also s struggle here with graduation rates. Michelle, what can you tell us about that? I think uh, it's it's part of our you know pipeline to success that we we need to be focusing on. And I know Governor Herbert has really um, brought this challenge to. Utahns to make sure that that we're all engaged in the process of making sure our women graduate from from college. You know, and I, I attended a, a fifth grade sex education class that my daughter was in a year ago, and and the the teacher said that that you know sometimes if you if you get, have a baby in college you stop, and our message has to be you don't stop. You know, you you finish or graduate, and and that's the our message needs to be that that's what we can do, and that we can help. Our, our women do. I think this goes back to something that you said earlier about not just encouraging our women, but talking to our men. Right. Make sure the Mentors. message is the same. You they know, mentor to. our boys the same way we're mentoring our girls right. about how we talk the about the, right. the importance of women being successful Everyone. in, right. in I our would lives. Challenge our, I would challenge every man to have a, or teacher or professor in, you know, in a university uh, community to, to, to positive, proactively mentor uh, uh, Two or three yeah. women that are, you know, that they know they're in their classes. It's it's a it's a challenge. It's not nothing's going to get done if we just talk about it and you leave it to someone else to do. And some of the numbers, by the way, are with regards to graduation rate because we got this through the uh, Women in the Economy Commission. Is they are graduating from from their undergraduate programs, but again. In Utah, we actually have these long time frames for people graduating from undergraduate programs up to six years versus a four year for a year for a four year program because of a lot of cultural components. Where we're not graduating is those master pro so graduate programs, so mm -hmm. master's degrees and so forth, you know, law school, mm -hmm. and that's where the gap is very very significant and it's very visible. So yeah, I mean, a lot of women enter. Um, they do enter into college at the same rate nationally, and we do really good at that. But then to finish that, it takes up to six to eight years for women, longer than men. There usually is between f six, five to six, um, which is already a lag in Utah compared to other parts of the country. But again, that's obviously counting some, you know, religious components if they serve missions and so forth, um, or if they get married at a very young age. But to your point is we need to talk about completion, right? right. So it's not only entering college, right. completing college. And going on. And going on to graduate programs, mm -hmm. absolutely. Because that, at the end of the day, it just helps the economy. I mean, everything is at the end, right. you know, economic development. Right. right. Thank you so much for your commentary, ladies. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Here.